scripture today given to us by Mother Laftery, the mother of us all, believe me, amen. Okay, dear. I give you permission. Our reading today is found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. And this is called the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Thank you, sweetie. Pastor Bob. <laughs> Welcome. So I'm going to share with you this morning that uh, was uh, written by uh, a school teacher from uh, our second home, uh, uh, Canada. Um, she's a school teacher in northern Ontario. Uh, and she grew up in Toronto, Ontario. And uh, her name is uh, Margaret Clarkson. Uh, and she wrote this originally as, a, as she called it, a little hymn, uh, just a little poem. Uh, and it sat around for a long time, and uh, nobody noticed it until uh, one evening, uh, John Peterson, who was in Bible, a movie Bible Institute at the time, uh, got a hold of the poem. Uh, and read it on his radio program, and uh, shortly thereafter he set it to music. So that's the background of this hymn. It's called So Send I You. Mm -hmm.
Thank you so much. Indeed, the challenge of that song. We are ready now for the word and for the challenge. And we're very, very happy to have the entire Haynes family with us. Lancaster, Pennsylvania, a good part of the world. And Tim Haynes will come now to introduce his son. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. As you know, um, I'm Tim Haynes, uh, Lefteri's youngest son. Uh, my wife uh, Dawn and I have 13 children. Only eight are here today. The oldest is 29. The youngest is seven, who's here today. Uh, we adopted eight children and we have five biological children. Um, when we first got married, we thought that we wanted three, maybe, four children. Um, but um, we went through infertility for several years and we um, decided to go down the adoption route. So we uh, miraculously adopted two children, our two oldest, and then we had Lauren biologically and then Connor. And Connor's going to come up um, and tell you a little bit about his story, but before he does that, let me tell you a little bit about Connor. He is a very tenacious young man. Uh, despite having some learning difficulties, his faith was shaped very early. One story that I can remember was about turtles, and he wanted to find turtles as a young boy. And he told Dawn, my wife, one night, God's not big enough to, to, uh, to find turtles for me. So my wife said, well, let's pray and ask God to have you find turtles. Do you know that God answers prayer? We, he found four or five turtles. He found a turtle, a snapper turtle in our window well, a huge snapping turtle in our garden, a box turtle in our front yard, and when he went to a nearby pond, he found two, uh, several other paint turtles. Now, quick story or a quick uh, note on that, we have not seen any turtles on our property since then or from that point. So we never saw any turtles on our property and God answered prayer with those turtles uh, on our property. So his faith grew very early on and trusting God. He, uh, he he's done a lot of things at an early age. He's created apps on the app store at the age of 10 or 12. Um, he went on a missions trip with my wife Dawn to Guatemala. And I think that mission trip was really the catalyst that made him want to travel around the world. In fact, he, when he got back, he wanted to bring uh, um, soccer balls back to Guatemala because the villages that he went to, they only had one soccer ball that was torn up. So the year or two later, he raised money and brought several hundred soccer balls back to Guatemala uh, with the gospel colors on them so, so that he could share and the people there could share the truth of the gospel. He's been on several missions trips uh, um, in his high school days. He went to China several times. Um, he, and he was, he's also very good with uh, videography. He did a full-length documentary of uh, Kiera's adoption from Albania. Um, in his senior year, uh, we homeschooled all of our children. But his senior year, I think it was about February, he wrote Dawn and I a letter. And he said, I want you to read this. And we read it. And he said, Mom and Dad, I want you to support me. I want to go to every country in the world before I turn age 20 to share the gospel or help missionaries in some way. How do you say no to that? So we uh, supported him. We gave him our blessing. And he started a journey um, uh, when he was 18, starting to travel around the world. Um, but that's really his story. He's going to tell you the rest of that story. He's been to, I think, 160 countries so far out of 195 countries. Um, he's 23, so he ha didn't do it by age 20 because of COVID, but he's going to get there someday. He's going to see every country in the world. So with that, um, I will say this, that uh, Connor has a very strong faith. I've learned so much from Connor, even as his dad, and I'm very, very proud of Connor. And with that, uh, welcome him up and uh, 
you'll hear a little bit more about his story. Good morning. Can you hear me? Is this connected? Yes. Okay. I'm so happy to be here this morning. Um, as my dad shared a little bit about uh, my story, I just wanted to share a little bit more about my testimony and some scriptures along the way, and then share a few photos at the end, and then um, you can go into questions and answers from there. So like my dad was, was sharing, um, I came to the Lord at a, at a pretty young age, around the age of 11, grew up in a very amazing uh, Christian family, but I didn't actually know the Lord until I decided for myself to open up the scripture and that's when Jesus met me and it says in in Romans 10 uh, verse 9 because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved and those were the verses that I read when I first came to to the Lord and what's really amazing is the Lord didn't just meet me and, and save me, but he had a, a bigger plan for my life. And really only a few months after I was saved, I had the opportunity to go on a missions trip to Guatemala um, right when I turned 12. And that missions trip is really what sparked my heart for the world and for all these countries and just for, for God's heart uh, for the lost and for people who are in broken situations and all of that. So. I went on that trip when I was 12, and really that trip, then God really moved in my heart for all of the nations in the world. And, and I started thinking like, what would it look like to continue to go on other trips? And throughout high school, I went um, on, I think it was, over, it was over nine different, I went to nine different countries um, from the age of 12 until 18. And some of those were adoption trips to pick up my brothers and sisters, but even those trips, I would try to be intentional with being able to, you know, pass out tracks or something like that. And even, you know, see what the situation was from the different orphanages that my siblings came from. And it was when I was 17, I was working a job at a small grocery store in our town. And that's really when God gave me this big vision, this big idea to, to travel to all the countries. It was a still small you know, voice of God. And I was really just on my phone, not doing anything important. But then I saw this um, advertisement and it said, it was like for a post. And it said, lady who visits every country in the world recommends the top 10 countries you should go to. When I saw that, it was as if God was speaking to my heart, Connor, I want you to do that, but instead of doing that just for tourism or just to see the world, I want you to do that and travel with me and share the gospel along the way and see what I'm doing in the world. And just like my grandma shared, Matthew 28, um, 18 through 20, it says, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That was one of the verses that really motivated me when God started speaking to my heart that I, to go to every country. I was also remembering back to scripture and reading it, how he speaks to us to go to all the nations, to, to go and make disciples. And sometimes that looks like just going in our neighborhood to our neighbors and, 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 and sharing and being faithful with them. And sometimes that looks like going on the other side of the world and um, sharing the gospel with people that don't even speak your language and, and learning your language their language or, or getting tracks in their language. So as soon as I turned 18, um, like my dad was sharing, I, I asked my parents permission and they gave me, you know, their spiritual blessing 
uh, to go. I turned 18 and I think three weeks later, I started traveling around the world. And now it's been five years and I've been to 160 countries and I've seen the Lord do so much. I've seen his faithfulness. I've seen his protection over my life and I've seen him, you know, even stop me along the way and have me talk to individual people that he wanted to, um, to share his good news with. And that's what I think is so amazing about the Lord is that he always has a plan for all of us. And all we have to do is, is follow that plan that he has for us. And one of the verses along the way that I've um, come to love is from 1 Peter 4, uh, 10 through 11. And it's about our gifts and talents and using them for the Lord. So let me read that. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God's varied grace, whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That verse in 1 Peter is really encouraging because God has given each and every one of us a different talent, a different gift, and a different platform. You know, some of us might um, be able to share um, the gospel, the good news in our workplace. Others of us might have um, a community or, or a neighborhood that we can, can share in, or, or sometimes God will have us go to the other side of the world. And, and that's what I've been so honored by is that he's taken me all over. I've gone to so many countries. I've gotten to see so many different cultures and experiences. But the most important part of me traveling is getting to see what God is doing and his story in the nations and how he's how he's partnering with different people. God, the, the God of the universe, partners with you and me to to serve and to, to reach out and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And that's something that is really always encouraging to me. And I always like to encourage people with is no matter um, how old you are, where you're from. Um, what you're good at or what you think you may not be good at, God still wants to, to move through you. All you have to be is, is willing to, to allow him. And that's what's always been so encouraging to me. If there's something that I've learned, though, from this trip around the world, like a lesson, it's been the goodness and the faithfulness of God. I have been traveling for five years and it's only by the grace of God that I've been able to go to so many countries. Um, it, there's always struggles like visas and there's different things like um, there's been different safety things along the way and times that I've even thought I would maybe die. But the Lord has protected me and he's been faithful and he's also provided. And that's what God does is when we when we say yes to his call in our life, when we say yes to whatever he has for us, he will always make a way and he'll, he'll not just leave us there and abandon us in that call, but he'll come alongside of us and he'll be closer than a friend, closer than a brother. He's, he's the nearest person to us. And that's something that I really have learned along, along the way. One of uh, the craziest testimonies or stories that I have of God's protection and faithfulness is um, this, this is a story that I hope will really encourage you and, and show you how close God is at times. I was in South Africa about three years ago and I showed up there. Actually, it was almost four years ago. I showed up there for one day and I was about to travel all across uh, the continent of Africa. So I flew into the very um, most south country, which is called South Africa. I got off the plane. I stayed at a missionary's house, and they had been missionaries there for 30 years. They had spent 10 years in a village. They had spent 10 years in um, a small town, and then they spent 10 years now in the city, and they hosted me for one night. And the next day, I took all of my belongings with me, and I want, went on the, the train, in, into the city. I got off of the train and just needed to walk for five minutes to get a bus to the next place that I was going. And as I was going from the train station to the bus station, I had everything that I own on me. I travel with you know, all my clothes. I have you know, a bag with some electronics. I do a lot of photography and videography to help different missionaries and ministries along the way. 
and I have all these things on me and I'm walking and as I'm walking, uh, someone is too close behind me and this is 7.30 in the morning so I wasn't really too concerned and it's like, it would be like downtown, you know, Philadelphia, you know, or New York, really high skyscrapers and it wasn't some back alley or, you know, sketchy sub suburb, it was, you know, the center of the city. And as I'm walking, someone's too close behind me, so I start walking faster. And as I'm walking faster, I notice that this person is also walking faster. So I turn around to see, you know, why they're following me. And as I turn around, this really tall guy starts choking me out. And he's, as he starts choking me out, um, about three and four or four other guys start lifting me off the ground. I was fully um, off the ground. Uh, my feet were off the ground and everything. And they start, you know, digging through my pockets, even, you know, touching my shoes. And I had a money belt on and they, you know, they even grabbed that. And I start losing consciousness because this guy's choking me so hard. And in that moment, I literally thought I was about to die. The only thing going through my head is this is it. You know, I'm 19 and I'm about, I'm about to die. This, this is a terrible way to die. Just take my things. All I wanted to do is scream, like take everything, but don't kill me. But they just kept pressing harder and harder. And eventually I was completely knocked out and I was laying on the ground. And within a few minutes I woke back up and started breathing and, and catching my breath. And I was taking really deep and, and big breaths. And as I was as I was waking up, my eyes opened and people were just walking past me on the street. And I was so frustrated. If there was a time that I was frustrated or angry at God, it was then because I thought that I was going to be protected by him traveling to all these countries. But it was just one thing after the next. Literally a, a month before that, I was in a different country in South America and someone robbed me at knife point and I said, you know what, this is in my head, I was saying these things, I'm done, God, I'm not traveling anymore, I'm finished, I'm not doing this trip, like it's too difficult, it's too, it's too hard, and I almost died, and now all my things are gone. And including, I had all of my photos and videos from, I think it was 115 countries at that point, all of them were, were taken by, by, these, um, by these robbers. And I got up off the ground, and this is the most amazing part of the story, is I was standing at the traffic light to cross the street to go to the train station somewhere safe. And I look down and I see my money belt and they had unzippered both of my, my zippers on my money belt. My passport was still there and I had um, a Ziploc bag with $1,000 and that was also still there. Even though they found the money belt and they unzipped it, it was still there and it was like a miracle. So I quickly zipped it back up and, and hid it away. And at the same time, I feel my back and on my back was my backpack that had all of my expensive camera equipment and had all of my photos. And I went from being so frustrated and so angry at God to then praising him, even though I was in pain, I, you know, I was still trying to catch my breath and every time I swallowed, it felt like someone was sticking a knife through my throat. But I was able to smile through the pain because I realized that not only did God protect my life, he made a way for me to be able to leave um, that day because of my passport and the cash. And also all of my photos, which he knew were so important to me, were still protected. So they took my phone, they took my clothes, they took my wallet and a few other things. But I was able to leave that unharmed. And after telling this story to some people, many people have told me that they've heard other stories from the same city that I was in, in South Africa, of people that have died even just for their, their phone. So I look back at that and I see that God has been faithful to me. You know, and time and time again, there's been so many situations where he has come through and he's protected me and he's for me. Sometimes that's financial provision. Other times it's as simple as a piece of watermelon or, you know, a cup of tea or a Coca-Cola on a hot, hot day. You know, God provides through many different people in many different ways. And we can look at his faithfulness. And one of the things I've been challenged to do is is start writing down the smallest of things of, of how God's provided and how he's been faithful to me. Yes. And, and that way I can look back in that and say, wow, look how amazing God is. Look at all the ways that he has been good throughout, throughout my life. So there's just countless 
and countless stories I could I could share. And and God is is so good and he's he's so faithful. And above all, though, this is the one verse that I have found myself coming back to, especially over the last couple of years. And this is the last verse I'll share. And then uh, I'll show you a, three, a few pictures from a, diff- from a few different countries. And then we'll do um, some questions and answers. And that verse is Luke 10, uh, 38 through 42. Luke 10, 38 through 42. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha came to him in her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, are you anxious and troubled about many things? But one thing is necessary. Martha has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. The reason I've come back to this time and time again is because sometimes, even for me, you know, God's taking me to all these countries and it's so easy to serve him sometimes and to see his goodness when we serve him. But before serving him even, we need to learn to be with him. And, and out of that place of being with him and being in love with him, we then will get to serve and we'll get to go and we'll get to share the good news because there's so many people that are waiting to hear the good news. But first we have to know him and first we have to sit with him. We need to be, um, we need to be like Mary, you know, sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning from him. And then we can get up and we can go and tell them about all the things that we've learned from, from Christ. So that's been one thing for me is, you know, I've had many opportunities to share the name of Christ and amazing testimonies of even people from different, um, you know, religious backgrounds of Buddhists and Muslims and, and even Hindus that I've gotten to, to sit with and, and share the gospel with. And it's come from a place of first knowing Christ. So that's what I want to encourage you with today is that we all have something that we um, have in our lives that we, we can use for the kingdom. And God will be faithful to provide and be faithful to um, partner with us as we say yes to his call on our life. And then also it all comes from a place of knowing him first. So that's what I wanted to share. And now I'll go through just a few uh, pictures here on, um, on the screen, just from a few different countries on, I've gone to. So this was recently, this was this year. Um, actually, I had the opportunity, I don't know if you heard about it, but in Turkey, there was a huge earthquake that happened, um, which killed over 50,000 people. And I got to go um, and for three months uh, serve um, the people of this region. We did a lot of food distribution and mostly what I ended up doing was I helped um, teach a lot of these kids English and spend a lot of time with them. And then I got to do house visits. So this picture is actually from one of the houses that I visited almost every day when I was there. And what was really cool is how building relationship, even though these people were Muslims, building relationship with them, I was able to um, share about Christ. Now this is, um, I think these are a little bit out of order, but this is a photo from uh, a refugee camp in, in Africa. So these are just different photos showing the different things I've gotten to see and experience. So this um, refugee camp was actually located in a dump uh, in, in Africa and these people had fled their home because of war. And uh, what was really sad is that none of these people had ever heard the name of Christ. None of them had ever heard about Jesus before. But the first people that started helping them were Christians. And that's what's amazing is a lot of times the first people that are going to help people in need are Christians. And then we have the opportunity to share about Christ. This is uh, a photo from one of my favorite countries that I've gotten to visit, which was Afghanistan. And a lot of times when I show this picture, people are surprised, but this, um, this is what Afghanistan looks like. And here's another picture from Turkey. Um, This is from Africa. 
This is also in Turkey. I spent a lot of time with the, the kids there. And this is also from Turkey. Also, lots of pictures from Turkey. Here is Morocco, which I had the opportunity to visit an underground church. It was about 30 believers in a basement. And we all sat around. And what was amazing is they were facing persecution in Morocco, but they were praying for the church in America. And that really moved, moved my heart. Here's another picture from, from Turkey. It was always with lots of, lots of kids there. We had lots of fun together. And here's a picture. It was the first night that I arrived in the earthquake zone, uh, which had killed over uh, 50,000 people. And this guy, we, he sat down and served us tea, and then he was showing us all the pictures of his store that he just opened a couple months before but got completely destroyed. He worked 30 years to open this store, a uh, toy store of custom toys, and then the earthquake happened, and within three minutes, everything that he worked for for all those years were gone. But he sat there, even though he had gone through so much suffering, with a smile on his face, and told us that he was just happy to be alive. Here's some more, more pictures from Turkey. This is from a Buddhist area of China where we got to go in. I went with some friends and we got to go in and, and share the gospel with people that had never heard the gospel before. They're practicing Buddhism and they will go around this prayer wheel for, you know, even hours a day just praying to different, different gods in, in their religion. This is in Afghanistan. Um, which for me was one of, I went right before the Taliban took over um, and got to experience the country. And it was really an amazing experience because these people have gone through so much war and suffering, but they were some of the kindest and most hospitable people that I ever, I ever met. Here's some damage from the earthquake in Turkey. You can see these buildings were maybe another two or three floors, but they just kind of pancaked on top of each other. There's just some pictures from, from Africa. This lady, um, she was, I think, 105 years old, and she survived the earthquake and was telling us all these different stories from um, the years growing up. And the place where the earthquake happened was in Antioch, which is where we were first called Christians. So there's a lot of history there, and it was amazing. We got to sit with these people and share, share the good news with them even. This is another picture from Afghanistan. And here's some of the devastation in, in Turkey. Um, it was really bad. But you can see, even though you see the devastation, the kids you know, were just so thankful for even the smallest things, like a, you know, a lollipop or something like that. More pictures from Turkey. These were all my, all my friends there. Here was, this was on my 19th birthday. I was in Nepal and I got to go out into some slum areas of uh, the city there and got to distribute Bibles in their own language. And here's some more pictures of Turkey. This was in Africa holding a <laughs> chameleon. Um, more pictures of Turkey. You can see this, this car is completely, you know, smashed underneath the, the building. So the devastation was, was a lot. This was in Thailand, and this is Africa, back to Turkey. This is Afghanistan. This, this once I saw actually seven people on, on a motorcycle, so this was not even that many. This was in uh, Turkey as well. So many of the people in Turkey were always hosting me, even though they had gone through so much, they were always hosting me and just you know, pouring out love. And what I was so moved by is even though they had lost so much, they were still so kind and hospitable and welcoming. And it opened up doors to be able to sit with them for hours and be able to share the love of Christ. Here is a, a village of a tribe in, in Africa. This was earlier this year. And um, they live in the jungle. So they, they really just make everything out of you know, wood and they just live in the jungle their, their whole life. Um, and the amazing thing is many of them have now heard the good news and have, have started coming to Christ and they have some of the Bible translated into their language. 
here's a mosque, um, the biggest mosque in Turkey. And here's another picture from, from Turkey as well. This is when I was teaching, um, this is when I was teaching English there. And yeah, lots of flowers in Turkey. So I think that's about, that's about it for um, the photos. So those are some of the photos. And I don't know if anyone has any questions for me before we finish up, but I hope that those just provided some visuals of some of the different ministries and different places that I've gotten to see and experience. Really, I've gotten to see so much. and I'm so grateful for God for that because it really has impacted my life and many others I've gotten to share with and I've hoped that they've been impacted by the good news of Christ. So if you have any questions, I guess that would be, be time now. Connor, yes. You're an amazing young man. Thank you. One thing, uh, I've gotten to know you and your family through your YouTube site. Um, one of the questions I have is how do you fund this? Or do you have a a fund me or you have a missionary fund or something that, that we can donate to? Thank you. That's that's a great question. It's it's always my favorite question because every time I get to just tell people that it's been five years of traveling around the world and when I talk about, you know, the goodness and faithfulness of God is I actually haven't even once had to ask uh, for funds. I have just trusted God and I've seen him show up in amazing ways. Like just a couple, it was about a month ago, I was in Jordan and I had just visited um, this really beautiful city and I had less than $200 across all my bank accounts and in cash. And I was, you know, still traveling and I, you know, I didn't even have a ticket home or anything yet. And I went into a coffee shop with a friend of mine who I was traveling with. We sat down, we, you know, we got a coffee and we were just sitting there, you know, for a little bit before needing to drive, you know, six or seven hours back to the city that we were going to. So I sat down and there was a guy there uh, who walked in with his wife, he was from Texas. And as we're sitting there, um, we start talking with him and he starts sharing amazing testimonies. He's a believer from Texas who's been living in Jordan for 10 years. We start sharing with him and then we walk over and we get a, um, his wife buys me this mango smoothie and I'm really grateful for that because on the way to this coffee shop, I was praying and asking God, like, what am I supposed to do? I have less than $200 and I still have all these countries I'm supposed to go to. I was traveling with a friend and I still need to fly home uh, for the summer. So, I was really grateful for that mango smoothie because I didn't have to buy it and I was really thankful for that. But then we continued talking, we walked back to the coffee shop and as we got back, this guy opened up his wallet and he threw down about $80 on the table. And I was in shock when he did that. He's like, no, this is the least I can do. And then his wife left and we continued talking and I was so blessed and encouraged by this conversation. As she got back, she handed him this wad of cash and he put it on the table and he said, that's for you. And it was for me and my friend. And in that moment, he gave almost $800 to me and my friend. And, you know, we didn't, we, we both, you know, my one friend, my friend that I was traveling with, he had a less than a thousand dollars and I had less than 200. And, you know, right there, God, you know, three times what I had in my, you know, my bank account. And it's so many stories like that, but it's not just financial. There's other times where, you know, I've gotten off of a bus and someone's helped me get to where I need to go or given me a piece of watermelon or I've arrived at someone's home and it served me, you know, a cold glass of water. And it's like God's provision is, isn't just in one thing. It's not just finances, but or a place to stay. You know, there's, I've been hosted around the world. So it's really been amazing just to see as I've traveled, how God just steps out and in his perfect timing, you know, makes a way for me to be able to continue. So I could share for days of all the ways he provided, but that's, that's what it's been like so far. Connor. Yes. How do you deal with the language differences? That's a good question. Um, the language dif difference is really hard. Like when I was in Turkey, what I would do is I had a little speaker with me and I would use my phone kind of as my voice. I would, there's a translation app. So I would speak into it and then I would press play and it would, you know, 
translate what I was saying. So, you know, that's, that's one of the ways is, you know, through different apps on the iPhone I can, you know, use to, to translate. Otherwise, a lot of hand gestures or just always smiling, you know, always is, is a great way of communicating. So it's, it's different every country I go and sometimes I have someone who can translate for me. Like I'll stay with a missionary and then they will know the language and be able to translate for me. So that's, that's normally what it looks like. Yes. That's a good question. I'm really trying to get back to Turkey um, because I was there for three months this year. So that's really the next place I'm trying to go back to. And then after that, I would love to continue traveling to some new countries because I still have 37 countries that I'm trying to visit. So Turkey is the next place I want to go back and, and visit some of the people that I've built relationships with and be able to pour into them for a few weeks. And then from there, um, start traveling probably to some co countries I haven't been to yet in, in Africa. Any other questions? Yes. When you're uh, preparing to go to a new country, do you do a little research on uh, the churches that are there and the possible contacts you might have, like, for example, the main missionaries or that? Yes. I always, because my main goal in traveling is to see what God's doing in the nations and partner with him in that. So I always try to look like, what does this country's history look like with the church? And there are some countries where it's less than 1% of the people even, you know, know about Christ. And out of that, you know, there's maybe only a few churches like Afghanistan or some of these countries in the Middle East. But I always try to do research on what does it look like to be a Christian in this country because some of these countries are really hard and there's a lot of persecution that they face. And then also just some background information on that country so I can go in and say, okay, here's a little bit of history about this country. And then the number one thing I try to do is connect with either local Christians there or with missionaries so that they can show me like, look, this is what God's doing here. And so I'll uh, try to reach out to them before I go. And then a lot of times they'll host me at their house and show me the different ministries that they're doing and I get to be a part of that while I'm there. Yeah. How often do you get back home? That's a good question. I think I've come home at least once a year, if not twice, sometimes three. It just depends on the year. but. Uh, the last time I was home was over Christmas, and then I was gone for about seven months, and then just came back a couple weeks ago. So I'll be back for a little bit. I'm working a little bit, and then, you know, save up and, and continue traveling. Yep. Yes. Out of all the countries that you've been to, can you name a specific country that is least interested in? That's a really good question. Um, I think from like the standpoint of maybe like least interested in God, a lot of the European countries, although it's changing now, thankfully, a lot of European countries, like um, they've lost a lot of interest in God and they really are what people call like post-Christian countries. But there's still so much hope for them because, you know, God's still moving and he's like, for example, Norway, if you looked at Norway like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, you wouldn't see a really alive church that was thriving. You would see a really small number of believers. You know, a lot of countries in Europe have even, even though they all know about Christ and there's many old churches there, the number of Christians are sometimes, you know, less than, than 1%. And, you know, Norway was that way, but recently in the last few years, there's been a big move of, of God and there's been lots of people coming to the Lord uh, through salvation and the churches are being filled again. And now people are even leaving Norway and going to other countries in Europe and other countries around the world sharing the good news of Christ. So I would say probably like Western Europe would be like some of the countries that are least interested in God. But still, you go to those countries and you'll find people that are interested. Like when I was there in Europe about five years ago, one of the coolest testimonies I had was I got to, even though many people, local people weren't interested in hearing about God, there was a man from North Africa who I was able to sit down with for 45 minutes and share the gospel with. 
So you always will find at least a few people, but sometimes they're not from that country. But the good thing is God's still moving despite you know, the statistics or the numbers. Yes? Uh, yeah, these, you say you've got in contact with some missionaries uh, when you are going to another country. How do you do that? Are you working with a certain board? Or sure. That's a great question. Um, it looks different for each country that I'm going to. I have now, I have a lot of contacts. Um, I, there's a missions organization I do a lot of work with. It's called Youth with a Mission. And they are all around the world. So a lot of times I'll reach out to them. Um, and I did like a small school with them for six months uh, last year. So a lot of times I'll reach out to them and they have different mission spaces um, all around the world. You know, here in the US, they have, you know, hundreds and then and they're normally pretty small, like regional, and then they have them in other countries as well. So I'll reach out to them sometimes, but other times I will just reach out to random missionaries. I've worked with like so many di different denominations um, as I've traveled because as long as we have the same thing, you know, we we both love we both love Christ and can agree on you know the basic principles of that. You know, I'm willing to you know to work with them. So I've gotten to work with many different denominations, many different missions organizations, both small and both big, and sometimes just local, you know, Christians that they don't even have a, a ministry set up. They're just there, you know, living their life in, you know, whatever country they're in. And I just get to, you know, stay with them and see what it looks like to be a Christian um, in the country that they're living in. So it really is a wide range of, of different ways that I connect with them. Yep. We've been blessed today, have we not? Yeah. Amen. And we will continue to remember Connor and his ministry as he travels and asks God's blessing upon him to keep him safe above all and to be a witness and to fulfill the high and holy calling that God has called him. Amen. We would invite all of you to uh, remain with us. The women of the church have been so gracious to prepare a luncheon, and uh, we would like for you to uh, come and join us as we gather for a time of fellowship and even for more questions. Let us stand together as we ask God's. Blessing as we depart today. Our Father, we have indeed been challenged. We've been challenged by the word to go into all the world. And we are grateful that there's one among us that has answered that call. And we ask your continued blessing upon him, above all, to keep him safe. Because the dangerous world that we live in, we've again been so grateful with this testimony when he was attacked and harm could have come. But the angels of the Lord encamped around those that fear him. Amen. And we thank you for that. Amen. Continue to guide and lead and open the door of ministry to Connor as he is your servant, as he has obeyed the Macedonian 